Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson on pharmaceutical basics. This lesson discusses controlled substances, including the different schedules and the legal and professional requirements for handling controlled substances. Controlled substances are drugs that are regulated by law due to their potential for abuse and dependence. These are drugs that have special restrictions as to who can prescribe and sell them, and how often they can be prescribed. The United States Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, classifies these substances into five schedules based on their accepted medical use, abuse potential, and likelihood of causing dependence. Schedule one drugs have the highest potential for abuse and severe physical and psychological dependence. These drugs have no accepted medical use in the United States and are only to be used for research purposes. Common examples include heroin, marijuana, and LSD. Schedule II drugs also have a high abuse potential, but have some accepted medical uses, such as pain management, with severe restrictions. These drugs are available by prescription only and cannot be refilled without a new written prescription. Common examples include oxycodone, morphine, and fentanyl. Schedule III drugs have a moderate risk of abuse, with high psychological dependence, but low physical dependence. These drugs have acceptable medical uses, such as anesthetics, pain management, and insomnia management. Prescriptions may be refilled five times in six months if authorized by a provider. Common examples include Tylenol with codeine, barbiturates, and ketamine. Schedule IV substances have a lower abuse potential than Schedule III drugs, accepted medical uses such as anxiety treatment, and limited risk of dependence. These drugs are also available by prescription only and may be refilled five times in six months if authorized by a provider. Examples include diazepam, which is Valium, and alprazolam, which is Xanax. Schedule V drugs have the lowest potential for abuse, accepted medical uses, such as treatment for a severe cough, and contain limited quantities of certain narcotics. These drugs may require a prescription or may be over-the-counter or OTC narcotics, which are sold only by registered pharmacists, and the buyer must be 18 years old and show ID. Examples include cough syrups with codeine, Lyrica, and Lomatil. The handling of controlled substances is governed by strict legal and professional requirements to prevent misuse and diversion. As discussed in a different lesson, Controlled substances must be stored in a locked cabinet in a medicine room, a locked drawer in a locked medicine cart, or automated medication dispensing system. If a controlled substance is removed from one of these locked areas and the patient refuses it, the disposal of the drug must be witnessed by other personnel. There must be very careful documentation of the use of controlled substances within the facility. Be sure to understand and adhere to your facility's policies about controlled substances. Although regulations regarding controlled substances aim to curb abuse, they can also create barriers for patients genuinely in need of these medications, such as those with chronic pain or terminal illnesses. It is extremely important to be aware of the signs of drug seeking as opposed to a patient who is in genuine need of a controlled substance. Drug seeking behaviors include frequent requests for early refills, frequent requests for PRN and scheduled narcotic medication from nursing home residents, resisting alternative treatments, specific drug requests, visible signs of substance misuse, such as symptoms of withdrawal, overdose, or intoxication during visits, including muscle pain, vomiting, agitation, dilated pupils, nausea, stomach cramps, being unresponsive but awake, lack of coordination, and disorientation. The elderly often experience decreased liver and kidney function, thereby making them more susceptible to accumulation of drugs and overdose. In general, it is recommended that doses of opioids are reduced with longer dosing intervals for the elderly to prevent drug accumulation, overdose, and reduce side effects of opioids. It is important to always approach these situations with empathy, offering support and resources for treatment if necessary. Patient education is critical in these situations and any situation involving controlled substances. Patients should be made aware of side effects, proper use, storage, and disposal of controlled substances, as well as the risk levels for dependence. Let's try a practice question to check your understanding. 
Which of the following best describes a Schedule II controlled substance? A. Drugs with the highest potential for abuse. No currently accepted medical use in treatment in the United States and are only to be used for research purposes. B. Drugs with a high potential for abuse, a currently accepted medical use with severe restrictions, and are available by prescription only with no refills. C. Drugs with a moderate risk of abuse, a currently accepted medical use in treatment in the United States, and are available by prescription with up to five refills in six months. D. Drugs with the lowest risk of abuse, a currently accepted medical use in treatment in the United States, and are available over-the-counter, but the buyer must be 18 with an ID. Take a second and try to figure it out on your own. The correct answer is B, drugs with a high potential for abuse, a currently accepted medical use with severe restrictions, and are available by prescription only. In summary, only. controlled substances are drugs that are regulated by law due to their potential for abuse and dependence. They are classified into five schedules based on accepted medical use, abuse potential, and likelihood of causing dependence. The handling of controlled substances is governed by strict legal and professional requirements. It is extremely important to familiarize yourself with both the law and your facility's policies about controlled substances. It is also important to recognize drug-seeking behavior and to handle patients in need of controlled substances with empathy and respect.